All right, so what should we take away from the apology and keep thinking about? One thing is Socrates' attitude toward death. So here's something he says. Either death is a state of nothingness and utter unconscious, or, as men say, there is a change and migration of the soul from this world to another. What Socrates is saying here is that death isn't something to be afraid of, because there's two possibilities. One is that I've just simply ceased to be, and I'm no more lamenting that fact than I am lamenting that I don't remember existing before I was born. I just simply won't be, and in that case, I won't be experiencing anything positive or negative. I just won't be experiencing anything. The other option is that maybe this non-material part of myself migrates into some other world and I get to keep doing the same thing that I've been doing, talking to people, learning things. So either way, I win. I don't care about death. I'm not afraid of it. In fact, one of the things he says is it makes no more sense to fear death than it does to look forward to it because nobody knows what happens after death. So there's no reason, rational reason, to associate any emotion with something that you don't know about, that you don't know is going to be uh, uh, bad or good. This leads to a couple of conclusions that I want you to start to think about, or implications to be the better word. Okay, so Socrates claims that the person is not the body. The person is a possessor of a body. In other words, Socrates um, works from the assumption of what we'll call dualism, that, uh, that the reality is is constituted by two kinds of things, material things and non-material things. So we look at the world, we look at the universe, we look at reality, there are things like iPhones and people and squirrels and trees, and those are material things. But Socrates would say there's also non-material, non-physical things like minds, psyches, souls, spirits. And, so and Socrates says, that that non-material aspect of you is the real you. It's the most important you. So as a consequence, a good person cannot be harmed by a bad person. Because the worst that a bad person could do is destroy your body. But that doesn't destroy yourself, like your, your true self. Now, Socrates would probably agree, though, that a, um, a bad person could harm a good person by deceiving a good person. Um, so that's why so Socrates is always asking questions about what people claim to know so that he doesn't get deceived. The other idea we'll start exploring here that Socrates kind of hints at in the Apology is that ideas are more real than bodies because ideas are eternal and unchanging. In other words, ideas like justice and beauty these are, in Socrates' mind, these are ideas that transcend individual lives. They, they don't change. They are perfect in their form. We'll look more at that a little bit later. And as a consequence of them not changing, they're, they have more, they're more real than our temporary bodies are. Our bodies come in, they, uh, we die, and they deteriorate, and they're gone. So in Socrates' mind, ideas are real. And I want you to think about that. Are ideas real, or are they just happenings in our minds? Most important, Socrates believed, and he put his money where his mouth is, or was, ideas are worth dying for. Are they? When I've asked students this in the past, are there any ideas that you would die for? Most folks can't quite get their heads wrapped around it. Um, they will say, well, I would die for my family. It's like, but your family's not an idea. Your family's real people. Would you die for the idea of family? In other words, if someone came into power and they uh, were going to realize Plato's dream, we'll talk about that later, and make it so that there were no families, that you just have these fertility festivals where everybody's having sex with everybody else and they produce a bunch of kids and nobody really knows who their parents are and you have just this big collective of caretakers but no families. Would you die for that, to prevent that? That would be dying for the idea of family. I was listening to a podcast the other day, and the guy being interviewed was a, he's like a physical fitness guy, but he was a former um, Marine. And he was saying, he put it very, he put this question very well. He said, the people who voluntarily sign up for military service are willing to put their lives on the line for a piece of paper. In other words, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, that they're willing to to die 
for the ideas that are embodied in those documents to survive. And that's kind of what Socrates is getting at, right? For Socrates, the, 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 the idea worth dying for was the truth. And he says, I, I could just like, I could lie to you in my defense and save my life, but the truth is more valuable than my life. And so therefore I'm willing to sacrifice my life for the sake of the truth. Are there ideas that you would be willing to die for? Ideas, not things, not people, ideas. That's something I want you to think about, and we're going to return to that um, here whoops, uh, in, in the next little while here, the next couple of weeks. All right.